Welcome back, guys. This is Doug with Basement Level Magic, and we are back for the first round of our Oath BFZ 8-4. It looks like a keep to me. Got two double-costed white spells, but they're two of our best. I need one mana. Uh, we have a three-drop, but we also have another removal spell. I'm going to keep this. All right, we're playing against a green. All right, so we hit our lands. Now we can start uh, drawing some gas. That'd be good. Well, that's not gas. It's the opposite of gas. Loam larva. Rack has one, <coughs> excuse me, one turn late to the party. I think we're going to get him online, though. He blocks a loam larva, unless he wants to use a trick. I got another cluster healer, I'm okay with that, too. Opponent does not have a trick in hand. All right, so we're going to go ahead and play out the side master. And I'm going to go ahead and pass. I do want to get one attack in with the side master before I shoulder to shoulder, if I can. As I think he's probably holding up uh, Sweep Boy. That's not a bad draw. Uh, so let's go ahead and attack in and see what happens here. He's also playing three colors, so he could just be off his mana. He takes this, I think we're good to go. Although now I'll probably play the uh, Night Watch. I'd rather not lose my creature. If he wants to put this much um, effort into uh, getting rid of it, I'm happy with it. That's fine. Cost me my whole turn, cost him his whole turn. So I think ultimately it was a win for me. He wants to get in. That's fine. He can get in for one. All right. So I think here we'll just play out the Night Watch. And I will yield until the end of the turn. Don't think I'm gonna attack. Don't really want to get swept away for one damage. Although I guess if he used it now, it wouldn't be that bad. Unity of purpose. So he was looking to bait me into an attack. No attack, that's good. Leaving up a bunch of mana though. That's unfortunate because I can't play it. Yeah, I feel really bad about isolation zoning a uh, loam larva. I think I'm just going to play a side master. And 
And we'll attack with the class three night watch in the air. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. All right. No, we won't. I think my opponent does not have an attack here. start getting some damage through and I think with him being down to two cards we, it's time to start pushing even though we have to take another turn off with our Colostra healer he's using another trick to try and save this thing sure and we have another core side master to play And our opponent's down to one card. Make that zero cards. So we definitely take two here. That's a pretty good draw too. So with five mana we can actually play two creatures. Um, I think we want to play Envoy and the Castigator. Take our opponent to nine. He's on a two turn clock. Uh, that doesn't really change anything. I mean, it's one more turn, but. I can also just isolation zone it, which I think is what I'm going to do. Am I? I guess actually... Uh, let's see. Attack with both of these. I assume he needs to block the fire. He'll choose to block the five. No, oh, interesting. So he takes five here. We just win, right? Yeah. All right. So that's game one. So, so far, mediocre green-blue deck. <sighs> Rising Miasma didn't appear to do much. Actually, surprisingly, Visions of Brutality would have really, really screwed him. It actually looks good in, the, in this deck, actually. I'm going to put that in and take out Bone Splinters, as I don't see it much that I would want to sacrifice of my own. Although he may have, uh, he may be playing, um, what was it, the uh, minus six, minus O blue card. I can see taking out Tar Snare. Yeah, let's do that. They both do the same kind of thing. Um, one of them you gotta use almost as a combat trick. The other one, you uh, have the benefit of, you know, being able to play on a, on a creature without having to use or put one of your creatures up against it. And it almost always just turns this creature off. So we'll see what round two has to offer for us. 
Oh, that's a rough one. So it's got one of our better removal spells as well as, <coughs> pardon me, um, a two drop we can play. But it needs to draw some series lands from here. Um, I'm going to keep it. I know it's risky. I'm doing it. I'm calculating that risk. <laughs> Uh, three drop is not a bad draw, even though it's not a land. I would rather have a land, but. Next turn, we want to land for sure. Although, we'll probably, if he doesn't play anything, just play the other killer anyway. That's fine, we can blank his damage. There's that lone larva again. Oh, pardon me. I feel like I'm losing my voice. And I just started. Alright, so we hit a land, perfect. I think we can take another turn of damage. Let's just get another healer out there. As if we continue to hit lands, we'll just be able to start cranking out allies, holding four in our hand, and a really premium removal spell. Plays nothing. All right, so we did hit an ally. So I think we want to just get the Bloodbond Vampire out there, as it will get huge. Just by being played. Next turn we can play a Core Side Master. Or if we draw a land, the Calastria Nightwatch, and attack for like seven. Assume if he can, he'll have to take care of it now. Oh, yeah, man, he could. So Palma's tapping out to attack us, which I think is somewhat questionable um, as he's losing four life this turn and did five to us but we also gained two he may have a sheer drop in hand and maybe why he decided to do that but even with just one of the class three healers I think we're still in a dominating position. He also has no colorless mana so far. I'm a little surprised he's going to continue to attack. Probably means he has some way to deal with the Calastria Nightwatch. And because of that, we'll probably play the Sidemaster this turn so we can leave the Immolating Glare up. Oh, that, that'll do it. Luckily, he was not able to awaken. Sad that we lost both of our Class 3 healers, but... We already got him to 11. He can't block this particular creature, so that's good. 
Um, so we'll go ahead and attack in, see what happens. This allows us to leave up our steering light and our emulating glare, so we'll do that. Could have seen not playing the spawn binder there just because it allows me to, um, if he doesn't play another creature, it allows me to get him to attack. Since he can't block anyway, he probably would and give me the opportunity to destroy one of his creatures. Here we just want to go ahead and attack with both. Let's see what he wants to do about blocking. takes care of his creatures and we have our immolating glare left drawing an ally here would be amazing as he's he actually still can't block though drawing a land is less amazing But he probably goes to three here. And we'll see what we get. Can't attack, I'm sure. Does he have something to play, though? Um, yeah, so that doesn't really change much. So we just attack with both. He has to block the side master or he's dead. So he probably goes to one here. That seems pretty bad for us. I suppose I could have used the shear drop for that. But he has to play a creature. So I think we're in a good position. He drew a land, which is not a creature. He has one, though. Oh, <laughs> all right, fair enough. All right, guys, this has been Doug with Basement Level Magic. That is round one of our Oath Battle for Zendikar 8-4. I'll be back shortly with round two.